The month of May is Mental Health Month. Welcome to Let's Talk About It. I'm Dorothy Sterlogson. My guests today are Pete Bruno, who is the chair of the Local Advisory Council on Mental Health and Addictive Services, and Barbara Kuster, who is associated with the Wraparound Program. Thank you both for joining us. Thank you. Pete, um, as chair of the Local Advisory Council on Mental Health and Addictive Services, what do you do? So around the turn of the century, the state decided it would be wise to get local input up there in Helena so that they could address how services were going across the state county by county. And so in about 2005, when I was working for AWARE, I became part of the council and then eventually was the chair. And the council took a break a couple of years ago and I was asked if I would restart it. And so for the last year, we've been gearing up for this special month and this special day that's coming up. Okay, and as such then, on a, on a regular basis, um, what is your associated association with people with mental health issues? So the, the purpose of the LAC and what we do is we get service providers together with consumers and also city officials to look at what are the needs of, of the people and how can we best address them, which has become a huge issue here with energy impact. So people with, that have, have mental health issues, is this a diagnosed um, situation or many are just undiagnosed as well? Well, we, the, the people who come and participate in our council may not have a diagnosis at all, but maybe have a family member as well because it's designed both for consumers and family members of consumers to give input. Okay. Um, you talked about the energy development and the influx of people. Um, there was a, a, a boomtown psychology um, di uh, defined in the 1970s. What does that mean, Pete? Well, that, that's kind of up for grabs. It's an excellent question because back in the in the 70s, I was also working in a community that was going through uh, this boomtown psychology. And what they found was that it's harder to predict what's going to happen in these situations in Montana than, it, than we thought it would. Our chief uh, keynote speaker that speaks at noon on our special day is one of the survivors of 10 years of planning and handling this sort of thing. And what he says they found was that when they hired experts to tell them what to expect, they were wrong each time. People did differently than what the experts predicted that came in from out of state. So the bottom line is what then? So the, so the bottom line is, you know, we've, we've got stresses on all of our systems. Our, our uh, churches are doing more counseling than, than ever before. Law enforcement sees the impact. The impact on schools is huge. And so all aspects of the community, the health delivery system, people are so incredibly busy meeting all of these needs that are now present in our community that, that weren't there two, three years ago. So the, the bottom line is we're very, very busy. We've got lots of challenges and we're looking for enduring solutions. And that's an ongoing process? That is an ongoing process. Uh, Barb, you have, have, were a longtime resident of our community and moved to Billings. Um, what happened in that regard? Well, um, when our grandson was 10 years old, he came to live with my husband and myself, and uh, sh we noticed a lot of mood swings. And uh, so uh, we took him to a psychiatrist and he uh, diagnosed him as a bipolar disorder, ADHD, and anxiety. And uh, he did well in the summer, Summers, he would go fishing and just, you know, go swimming, do things that regular kids do. But when he would start school in the fall, he would start um, 
complaining of the lights and the, you know, not wanting to go to school. He didn't want to be touched in the hallways by the other kids. And uh, so um, he would refuse to go to school and his behavior would increase and uh, would increase at home, bad behavior, and so he would end up going to treatment facilities. We would send him to Helena to Shodare Children's Hospital or Acadia in Butte. And uh, we would go um, up there every two weeks. We were in family therapy. And um, it was so hard because uh, he would cry. He would want to come home and and we'd cry on the way home. <laughs> and, uh, you know, there were kids up there that were as young as uh, six, seven years old that left their families. And so, um, you know, I just became very interested in mental health because of that. And um, so um, he was in a group home in Billings for a short time and uh, he played football and he did pretty well up there. So we decided in his eighth grade that we would move to Billings and uh, because we thought, well, there's more programs up there to help him. And, you know, there was still um, the issues with school, but uh, the, the school district did pay for him to have a, a tutor that came to our house once every day for an hour. And uh, we saw a great change in him. And, uh, you know, it was very helpful, but he missed out on a lot as far as social skills. Um, when we first moved up to Billings, um, the, I, uh, the Children's Mental Health Bureau sent me to uh, a conference on wraparound. And that gave me a lot of hope when I found out about wraparound. And uh, so um, I was hired by uh, Pluck, Parent Let's Unite for Children. And uh, that was to be a, a parent support group. I became um, um, certified to do that, went through a lot of training, and um, worked as a team with families. And being as I had been through some of the similar experiences, I could um, identify with the families that were in that wraparound team. And I'll tell you more about wraparound. Um, what I liked about wraparound, well, maybe I should get back and explain about um, my second job, <laughs> because that really affects Eastern Montana more. Uh, I w my second job was work, uh, I was hired by a firm out of Missoula, which was uh, Consumer Direct. And uh, they uh, hired me to come to Eastern Montana to get the wraparound program going here and to uh, recruit peer to peers to do what I was doing in Billings. And so I talked to local uh, mental health advisory councils, telling them about wraparound, and uh, was able to um, identify prospective peer-to-peers that would be part of the wraparound team. Well, in the meantime, uh, the funding um, discontinued through the, um, the Eastern Montana program. <laughs> So uh, I remained working for uh, Parents Let's Unite for Children, and I continue to see families. I see five to six families a week, and I meet with them weekly. And um, Pluck has made a commitment that they want to continue the wraparound program in eastern Montana. And the director right now for Pluck is um, meeting in Helena, coming up with a plan as to how we can uh, implement the wraparound program in eastern Montana. Can you explain a little bit, Barb, what the wraparound program is all about? Yes. What I like about wraparound is that it's family-driven, 
and uh, families um, identify what their needs are. We don't tell them what their needs are. And uh, if families have voice and choice. And uh, we, um, we include the, the child in that group meeting as well. There's um, parents can decide who they want to be on that team. The only mandatory people would be like uh, a, a probation officer or protective services individual, like if that family's involved with those agencies. Uh, there's a, a facilitator that facilitates and makes sure that all the, the different uh, phases are covered in the wraparound process. Um, when we meet with the family, we encourage them to, uh, as much as they can, uh, uh, run their own program. And so we start out by having the child go up front and, uh, and uh, they talk about what their successes were for the week. And that can go from, uh, oh, maybe um, getting A's at school, or it can be just making a new friend. And um, sometimes just the fact that they were there <laughs> can be a big success for that This child. is in a family setting? Uh, we meet either in the home or we meet um, at the Pluck office. It can be a, a choosing of where the family wants to meet, where they feel comfortable. Uh, it's, like I mentioned, it's team-based, but it also includes natural supports. People that support the family in the community, we try to bring in community support people, so that can uh, include somebody from their church. It can be a neighbor, a friend, extended family member, and uh, you know, whoever the family wants to be there that will support them. And uh, besides natural supports, it's an integrated team. That includes all the formal and informal people that work with the team, or with, work with the family. So it can be a um, behavioral specialist, it can be a teacher, uh, you know, a wide variety, the therapist that might be working with the family. And do they come also on a weekly basis then? They do. And if they can't be there, then we make sure that they, you know, they are brought up to date as to what took place during that meeting. Uh, uh, getting back to family needs again, uh, the needs can vary. Uh, sometimes they're very basic needs, like maybe they just need food or uh, heating, water, um, or it can, you know, it can be just run-of-the-mill things like um, a friend. How do, how am I going to make friends? Um, how how am I going to get my GED? You know it. Um, it can just, it's not us determining what the family's needs are. I think that's so important because they buy into it. The family buys into it if they can identify what they want rather than what us as professionals tell them they need. Uh, it's uh, cu culturally competent and we build on their values and their preferences, their culture and um, their identity as far as a family and a community. It's individualized, so it's very customized for that child. And it's strength-based. I think this is one of the most important things is we we determine what the strengths of the family are. We determine what the strengths of the youth is and what the strengths of each team member is and and build on that. So uh, maybe I'm good at one thing, but another family member is going to be, you know, have a different skill. So whatever we can, whatever skills and strengths we can bring 
to that team to, to help the family is so important. And I know um, nobody, when I met with groups with my grandson, nobody asked me what I was good at. <laughs> it was usually, what can this family need? What's, you know, what are your weaknesses and how can we, you know, focus on that rather than on strengths? So I think that is so important. And we are persistent. We don't give up on the kid, you know? We don't give up. Everybody else has given up. They, sometimes they even give up on themselves. They, uh, they uh, refuse to go to school. They drop out. Teachers uh, expel them. And uh, we just hang in there with them. And Do you find that most families are, are wanting to hang in there with their kid too, once other parts of society have rejected them? Uh, some families, no. Some families are so beat down, they give up. And uh, we have to bring them back and uh, show them that there is hope. We're always encouraging them and letting them know that there is hope. And pretty soon the kids start believing it and so does the family. And we start working together. Do you see success stories then in your in your day to day work then, Barb? Every day, every day. That's why I'm so committed to this. We uh, we see kids that are from a traditional family. Uh, one family, the girl uh, lost her mom to cancer. Her dad was grieving and wasn't really paying a whole lot of attention to what she was doing. She got involved with the bad crowd start drinking and she got a DUI and got involved with the prob you know the probation system and so uh, they were referred her to us and uh, it was like oh, probably four or five months and she was back on track again you know uh, uh, she brought in some family uh, friends that were you know supportive and uh, you know, it really made a difference to this girl. And she, uh, you know, she stopped her drinking and got into therapy. Uh, we've had other kids that have more severe problems. They might be running away, cutting themselves, uh, drinking. Uh, I think it's so important uh, to combine uh, uh, chemical dependency with mental health issues because lots of times kids get, they self-medicate and they think uh, that's going to help them cope, which only compounds their problem. But um, this girl we probably, that I just mentioned that was cutting in herself, running away, uh, running with a bad crowd, she completely turned around. She got started getting A's in school. She started helping other students. She was became one of the teacher's favorites. And uh, she completely runs her own uh, team member meeting. And um, in fact, we just graduated her. And we always um, ask the kids when they, um, you know, terminate the program. And we do keep in contact with them once they do terminate. But uh, we celebrate, and uh, we asked them, how do you want to celebrate? And she wanted to go to take her family to Chuck E. Cheese. <laughs> so that's how we celebrated with her. One kid we celebrated, he wanted pizza and coconut ice cream from Baskin Robin. <laughs> so, uh, you know, it's, um, it's just so enlightening, so it just, want you to keep going when you see all the progress these kids are making. Uh, some kids uh, drop out of school, so we help them get their GED. Uh, some of them help them, uh, you know, get a job. And uh, they start believing in themselves. And I think that's one of the most important things is they, they realize that there is hope for them and they, they can, you know, they can move forward. So you are working on getting the wraparound program here in eastern Montana. Um, besides the funding that it takes for that, Barb, do you have personnel that can can do what you do? Is uh, that a problem to find people to, to work the job? 
Well, uh, it will require training. Uh, in order to be a facilitator or peer-to-peer, -peer, you, you need to first have experience working with mental health uh, issues or people in your you know, immediate family. Or um, to be a facilitator, you need to be a, a mental health, uh, you know, have some experience with that. So it will require training, and we do have people that will do the training. Myself, uh, you know, I'm trained as a coach to train others. And then we have somebody in our, um, in our office that can do peer to, or uh, facilitate training. And uh, so the, the goal will be to train those people in the communities, and then they will be able to move on and train others. And the people that are in the wraparound program uh, can, uh, you know, sit in and uh, be there for other families that are just starting in the program. Peer-to-peer -peer means what? Uh, it means, uh, well, it's a, a family support person. That's another term for it. And it's people that have had a personal experience that are there to advocate and the go-to -to person for the family that uh, can help them, you know, go through, you know, understand the system. Um, sometimes they know uh, by learning the system, they're more comfortable, they know the steps to go through and uh, make it easier for them. How's your grandson doing? Well, he's doing pretty good. He, um, he got his GED and um, Socially, he, is so, he has so many friends now, and he's involved in sports. He plays disc golf and volleyball and, and uh, pickleball, and, and he loves to go fishing. He, uh, he enrolled twice at the college because he wants to be a, um, a math. You know, he's real good in math, and he's smart, but Again, the anxiety will get to him, and so he'll keep trying. He'll get, he'll get to it, I think, with a little bit more maturity and learning more coping skills. You know, he's, he's learning to, to do better. <laughs> and you'll be doing a presentation at Pete's um, workshop on May 21st. What will you be talking about, Barb? Well, I will be uh, kind of sharing what I am today talking about my personal experiences, probably what some of the, I see some of the needs in, uh, in the communities based on what I, you know, my personal experience, but also talking to local advisory council people in those, you know, um, listening to what they have to say in each community because each community, things are unique to them so I want to hear what each community has to say about what their needs are. They usually turn out to be pretty universal, but how we approach it may be a little different uh, based on the strengths of the community and what they, you know, what, um, what they have available to them. Um, and I'll be talking about wraparound, of course, what I like about wraparound, how I have a vision for wraparound. <laughs> and I want to uh, just answer people's questions. You know, it's a new process. Uh, we have it, like I said, it, it's uh, going throughout the state, but it's just n new to getting started here in uh, Region 1 in the 17 counties. And would there be a blanket um, agency that would would house the wraparound? Well, uh, right now, you know, uh, my, my boss, Roger, is saying uh, we're going to go ahead with wraparound regardless. And so how that develops, we don't know at this point. But uh, we're committed to wraparound. I'm committed to wraparound. Okay. And so uh, I've been working at this since 2008, so I'm going to 
keep doing it as long as I can. You're determined. I am determined. Pete, tell us about the workshop um, that you have, have outlined here. Sure. So our local advisory council selected the 21st of May, that Wednesday from noon until about 8.30 at night to provide a conference or a mental health summit, if you would, to follow up on the last one. The last one we learned something kind of shocking, which is that people in the middle of a mental health crisis consider all of us who think of ourselves as being helpers as the enemy. And so what Barbara's talking about is really important to families to uh, understand how this system works and how we can all work together to achieve the goals of the family. And so we'll be starting with understanding about the impact of energy development on the community and looking at something called In Our Own Voice where family members come and talk about their experience with the mental health center system and, and behavioral health and such. And then we'll also have kind of the middle of it will be about mental health for kids. And then we're going to have another one of those In Our Own Voice at the end of the day for people who couldn't make it during the work day. So that's all May 21st up at Kearney Center and people need to go ahead and go on my Facebook page and then find the link to the Family Life Institute of Montana and go to the event and uh, click on going so that we can have a count of, of people so that we have enough food on hand for lunch. Is there a cost for the workshop? No, it is absolutely free. Okay. Um, how do we hook up with you on your Facebook page? So Pete Bruno on Facebook here in, in Glendive is probably the easiest. If some people are already my friend or, or have joined Family Life Institute of Montana, then they can go right to that page and click on this event, which is noticeable because of the picture on it of the Kearney Center. Okay, and, and you mentioned that if you can't make it for the whole workshop? Absolutely, come for whichever part that, that you like. I'm just finalizing the agenda with the last minute presenter and uh, then the agenda will be up there on the Facebook page as well, as well as sent out by email. Okay, in closing, anything you'd like to say, Pete? Just thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Barb, anything you'd like to say in closing? Well, I just want to say that, uh, you know, wraparound is family driven and uh, it helps families uh, how to help them prevent a crisis rather than um, deal with a crisis. We want to nip it in the bud before, you know, we have a crisis. But also uh, when there is a crisis, you know, we want to know how to deal with that in the community. and. Uh, you know, it. If, I, if I could interject, wraparound is very effective for keeping kids from being removed from the community. And it's the family that can do it. The importance of family and community. It is. It is. Thank you both very much, Pete Bruno and Barb Kister, for joining us today. The Mental Health Month Conference and Workshop is May 21st, beginning at noon at the Kearney Conference Center. Check into Pete Bruno's Facebook page for um, links to register for the conference. And for Let's Talk About It, I'm Dorothy Sterlogson. Thank you for joining us.